One of Hollywood's huge movie idols died Thursday. Elizabeth Taylor. For many of you here today, she would be part of your ancient history books. <laughs> she was a very good actress by most accounts, and she helped focus the international attention of the world on what was then an emerging AIDS crisis when very, very few would address it. But there was just one problem. She was married to seven different men with some random live-ins along the way. Obviously, whatever her life was about, there was also this very broken place, with men at least. This woman had some huge issues in her life, somewhere around her relationship with men. And apparently, this story from John's Gospel you just heard proclaimed in this gospel, this woman who met Jesus had very similar issues. She also was married many times, five actually, and another live-in. What could possibly be going on in a person underneath such difficulty and such destructive choices? And how embarrassing to live out those issues on a public stage, to be found out and to be shamed by many in front of the world. It's hard enough, you know, to know ourselves, to be honest with ourselves, our worst and our most destructive choices, but to have other people find out the worst about us, and even worse, the whole world. Yet, maybe, maybe to have that stuff uncovered in us, maybe to have that stuff brought out and addressed, maybe it's the beginning of freedom. Maybe it's the beginning of the freedom from that slavery, those sins. Maybe having those sins uncovered, unmasked, was just what needed to happen so that in this story, this woman, could stop those behaviors that she probably knew deep down inside of herself were perhaps killing her, her soul, if not her body. We all have them. Issues, that is. We all have issues. Just code for sins. Destructive behaviors by any name. The little businesswoman of Samaria know that day that as she made her way to the well to do what she did every day of her life, that that day was going to be different from the rest, that that day her sins were going to be exposed. They're going to be uncovered. They were not going to be hidden anymore, even from her own eyes. I'm sure she flinched. But she didn't run away. She flinched, but she didn't run away. This time, different from the others, this time she wasn't shamed for her choices. It's almost as if she could hear underneath this clear and undeniable truth about her messed up life, this time she could hear that this one just wanted her to look at it so that she can be free. He just wanted her to look at it so that she can be free. I know you, the strong but kind stranger said to her. I know you. I know the worst things about you, and I'm not leaving you. I'm staying right here to love you and to support you. I am here with you as you are. You don't have to be any different for me to love you. And what's more, I know there's freedom for you. I know there's a greater life 
for you. No minced words here. No bats hedged. He didn't protect her from facing this tough stuff, not for a second. No dishonest affirmations just so she would like him more and not run. Just the raw facts of her very broken life. This was a love she had never, ever known before. Too often she was loved just for her body. Too often she went from relationship to relationship to try desperately to end her loneliness, to end her insecurity. And what happened was the loneliness and the insecurity got reinforced instead of going away, lonelier and more insecure than ever. But she couldn't stop. The addiction to some ephemeral security and pleasure ruled her choices, even though the security kept eluding her and pleasure was numbed by loneliness. This is a love she had never, ever known before that stayed with her this time and did not leave even though she stood there at her ugliest. And she let him see her in her ugliness. And because she did, she could look at her own ugliness too and accept it, accept it as part of who she was. This love she had never, ever known came to her as she was. It didn't wait till she cleaned things up in her life. It didn't wait till she made things all right again and changed for the better. It came to her as she was. And what happened to her was that she could hold it up, this ugliness. She could hold it up and not hide it. She could hold it up and trust that this man would not go away to A while back, I was talking to a young man who had some deep sinfulness, some real issues that he had never really ever admitted, even to himself and certainly to no one else. I suspect that we all have that in one area or another of our lives and we squirm to even get close to thinking about it. Oh, he knew in the back of his mind. But he was really good at filing it away and getting on with his day. As soon as those thoughts about who he was would creep into his mind, he would distract himself very quickly because of the shame and how awful it felt. It was just too hard to look at. Then he told me. He stammered and he hedged and he told me. In his words, I puked it out. He was so brave that day. You know, people ask me every once in a while, what do priests think when we show them, tell them our worst? And I think almost every priest would agree. In that moment when you tell us your worst, we're not seeing at your worst. We're seeing you at your best. He was so brave that day. No more hiding this truth about himself from himself or from me. And what happened to him can happen to any of us, really. It can happen to any of us if we can just let ourselves meet, perhaps for the first time, a love we have never, ever known before. Now, he told me, I can trust myself again and not be afraid of that in me anymore. For the first time in my life, I'm not afraid to do things I was afraid to do before because of this. It changed the way he prays. 
Later, he told me that when he prays now, he can hold that broken place up first and highest. Here it is, God. No more hiding. And you don't hate me. Now that it's all out in the open, I know who I am, and I know you know who I am, and when I know who I am, now I can begin to order it all to you, God. This Tuesday, this community celebrates this profound reality, this love that perhaps we have never, ever known before. We celebrate this profound reality in the sacrament of confession here at the CSC. Available from 2 p.m. in the afternoon till midnight at night. This time you can give yourself that gift. Come. Come with that that you hide the most from others and from yourself. Come to the well of freedom you've been looking for. Hold your deepest sin, your darkest issues. Hold them high. Hold them highest. And meet a love and acceptance that perhaps you have never, ever known. Confession is one of those privileged places where we can hold up the worst in us for God to see. My friends, this is liberation. It's absolute freedom. And while we will squirm before the thought, it's absolute freedom. It's what makes a Messiah known. Liberation. No wonder the woman went back to her neighbors saying, he told me everything about me and he didn't leave. Come, meet this this Messiah. <laughs>